Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so yesterday, remember, we stopped in the middle of page 50. So if you're following along, find page 50. If you're with me, I'm going to show you page 50. Okay. All right. Page 50, the pyramids. So we stopped in the middle of a section. We're going to continue with the section. It was just a really long one. Okay. The Egyptians of the old kingdom built huge stone pyramids as tombs for their pharaohs. No ordinary tomb would do for a pharaoh of Egypt. Instead, the Egyptians built mountain-like pyramids entirely of stone. These gigantic structures, the size of several city blocks, protected the bodies of dead pharaohs from floods, wild animals, and grave robbers. The pyramids also held supplies that the pharaoh might need in the spirit world, including clothing, furniture, jewelry, and food. So remember as you're reading along, though, to stop and look at these diagrams and read the captions. I'm not going to, but it would be helpful for you. This one's about yesterday and the gods and mummification, okay? How was a pyramid built? It took thousands of people and years of back-breaking labor to build a pyramid. Most of the work was done by farmers during the Nile floods when they could not tend their fields. In addition, surveyors, engineers, carpenters, and stonecutters lent their skills. Each pyramid sat on a square base with the entrance facing the north. To determine true north, the Egyptians studied the heavens and developed principles of astronomy. So we've learned that again. So it's another, another civilization who has done the same thing. Ew. Sorry. With this knowledge, they invented a 365-day calendar with 12 months grouped into three seasons. This calendar became the basis for our modern calendar. So very similar to ours, right? But they only have three seasons. But I want you to really think about do you, how many seasons do you think we have here in Arizona? Okay. Do we have two? Do we have three? Do we have four? Do we have five? Think about how you would categorize a season, okay? To determine the amount of stone needed for a pyramid, as well as the angles necessary for the walls, the Egyptians made advances in mathematics. They invented a system of written numbers based on 10. They also created fractions, using them with whole numbers to add, subtract, and divide, similar to what you're doing with your ratios, right? After the pyramid site was chosen, workers went wherever they could find stone, sometimes hundreds of miles away. Skilled artisans used copper tools to cut the stone into huge blocks. Other workers tied the blocks to wooden sleds and pulled them to the Nile over a path paved with logs. Next, they loaded the stones onto barges where they were floated to the building site. There, workers unloaded the blocks and dragged or pushed them up ramps to be set in place. So this is one of the things that makes ancient Egypt different from today's Egypt. We need to understand that the climate was different. So where Egypt is very, very dry now, in ancient Egypt, they had a lot more water than they do now. So some of the places that are completely buried under sand now used to be right next to um, giant rivers. So they were able to do that during ancient Egyptian times. Okay, so here we have a look inside the ancient pyramids. So it says, ancient Egyptians buried their kings within large stone buildings called pyramids. So if I'm looking at this diagram and I'm looking at the key, the key gives me numbers and the matching number is on the diagram. So if I'm looking at one here, I find one on the map and it's going to tell me that this is an air shaft. So this is how they got air into the pyramid. Two, which is way over here, is the king's burial chamber. The king's mummified body was placed in a room at the pyramid's center. Three, the grand gallery. This tall sloping hall held large granite blocks that sealed the tomb. Four, way down here, is the queen's burial chamber. This chamber held a statue of the king, not the queen's body. That's kind of interesting, right? Number five, Let's see if we can find five. Here it is, way up here, is the entrance. So the entrance isn't actually on the bottom where we would think it would be. It's way up here on the side. So you had to get up here to go in. Six, the underground burial chamber. 
Sometimes kings were buried here instead. So if you're trying to avoid grave robbers, right, you don't want everybody to be buried in the same place because if they don't know where you're at, it's harder to steal from you. Okay. Number seven, the queen's pyramids. These smaller pyramids are believed to be tombs for the king's wives. Okay, so there's smaller ones outside. Eight, the mastaba. These tombs surrounded the pyramids held royal family members and other nobles. And number nine, which is way down here, is the valley temple. And this temple may have been used for rituals before the king was buried. So this might be where they did all their medical things, where they had the funeral itself before they put him into his chamber. Okay. But remember, history is something where, like, we can only look at the artifacts. So some of these things that they say now may change, right, as we learn more or we find more information or we find more writing or we find more artifacts. Some of what we believe can change. All right. Oops, sorry, I went too far. The Great Pyramid. About 2540 BC, or 2540 BC, the Egyptians built the largest and grandest of the pyramids, known as the Great Pyramid. It is located about 10 miles from the modern city of Cairo. This pyramid, built for King Khufu, is one of three still standing in Giza on the west bank of the Nile. It rises nearly 500 feet above the desert covers an area about the size of nine football fields and contains more than two million stone blocks. Each block weighs an average of 2.5 tons or two and five tenths tons or two and a half tons, right? The Great Pyramid was the tallest structure in the world for more than 4,000 years. It is equal to the size of a 48-story building and is the largest of about 80 pyramids found in Egypt. There are pyramids in other areas of the world, but remember, we're just talking about Egypt. The Great Pyramid is truly a marvel because the Egyptians built it without using beasts of burden, so they didn't, did not use ox and bulls and things like that. They did not use special tools. They did not even use the wheel. Okay. So, whoop. Goodness. All right. So we've reached the end of section two of chapter two. All right. Um, and I have no work for you today, so you're welcome. But I do want you to go back and look at the pictures and the captions. Look at the charts. Look at the maps. Please look at all those things from both section one and section two. I want you to be adequately prepared. I really like this section. I tend to ask a lot of questions about chapter two. Um, so it is really important that you take this time today, although there is not a written assignment, to go back and please look at the things that we did not look at. The charts, the comparison charts, the diagrams, the pictures, the captions, all those things that we didn't really read. Please go back and look at them. Um, because all of those things are free game <laughs> when I go to give you the test, okay? So please go back and look at those items. All right, and with that, I want you all to have a wonderful day. Bye.